Hello everyone. Welcome to this video lecture of 19 SCPHYU301. We have been discussing the third chapter vector analysis and this is the story so far. We revised the basic concepts where we saw the two ways to find the product of two vectors. First one is the dot product and the second one is the cross product. In the basics we also revisited the concept of product which can be calculated by this determinant and the vector triple product a cross b cross c which is equal to a dot c into b minus a dot b into c then we define this del operator which is a vector differential operator which is defined like this it is do by do x i plus do by do y j plus do by do z k and we can now operate this del operator onto a scalar field which is called as gradient of the scalar field which is a vector quantity we can operate this del onto a vector field which is a scalar quantity and it is called as divergence of that vector field or we can take cross product of del vector with a vector field which is a vector quantity and it is called as curl of the vector field we also define the Laplacian operator. Laplacian operator is lit written like this del square, which is second order differential operator and it is a scalar operator. So it is like double differentiation with respect to x, double differentiation with respect to y, and double differentiation with respect to z. It is important that you understand that these operators have no values. At any given point in space but when they are operated onto some scalar or vector field then there are values associated with them in rest of the chapters we are going to focus on these three operations gradient of scalar field divergence and curl of the vector field we want to see physical significance of each of them in this lecture we want to see the physical significance of gradient of scalar field First, we will see the concept of directional derivatives and then we will see the physical meaning or physical significance of gradient of scalar. Let's first write how gradient of scalar field is defined. Gradient of scalar field is obtained by operating this tell operator onto a scalar field say phi which is equal to this del operator is 2 by 2 x i plus 2 by 2 y j plus 2 by 2 z k and this del operator is operated on to the scalar field phi and what we get is so this del phi then becomes 2 phi by 2 x i plus 2 phi by 2 y j plus 2 phi by 2 z k this is how you can obtain gradient of scalar field we now have to see the physical significance of that suppose this shaded area shaded region here denotes a scalar field which i am calling as phi and this is a vector which is the gradient which is equal to do phi by do x i plus do phi by do y j plus 2 phi by 2 z k at this given point x y z this vector remember is the tell operator suppose now this is another unit vector u so let me write it by this notation u cap which is equal to a i plus b j plus c into k note here that since u is unit vector its magnitude is equal to 1 which means that 
if we consider the square root a square plus b square plus c square which is magnitude of that unit vector u it should be equal to 1 so now what we want to calculate is we want to calculate by how much the scalar field phi changes when we are moving in the direction of this unit vector u from this point let's say this point is x0 y0 into z0 so we want to now find out by how much the scalar field phi changes when we are moving along in this direction by infinitesimally small length dl this vector dl remember is vector along the unit vector u and it is its length is infinitesimally small which is equal to magnitude dl into the unit vector u so this dl therefore is nothing but magnitude of this infinitesimally small vector dl this dl is equal to therefore dl into vector u is ai plus bj plus ck which is equal to a into dli plus b into dlj plus c into dlk now we are moving from this point x0 y0 z0 towards this unit vector u by infinitesimally small displacement dl and we want to find out the total difference or total change that occurs in scalar field phi this dl let me write as dxi plus dyj plus dzk where dx is equal to a into dl dy is p into dl and dz is equal to c into dl now we want to find by how much this scalar field phi changes when we make a displacement of dl along unit vector u and that can be calculated by using partial differentiation d phi is equal to dou phi by dou x rate with which phi changes along x axis into dx which is the change along x axis plus the next term is dou phi by dou y into dy plus dou phi by dou z into dz this d phi now can be written as dou phi by dou x i plus dou phi by dou y into j plus dou phi by dou z into k this is a vector quantity taken dot product with dx i plus dy j plus dz k and therefore d phi turns out to be equal to del of phi dot product with the displacement vector dl so this is how i can calculate change that occurs in the scalar field phi when we are displaced along this infinitesimally small displacement vector dl Let's continue on the next slide with this concept of directional derivatives. So what we have is, this is the gradient of scalar field. This is a direction along u. And when we make displacement by infinitesimally small amount along that unit vector u, then the change in the scalar field that we get is obtained by the dot product of these two vectors, gradient of the scalar field dot product with the displacement vector dl this dl can be written as magnitude of the displacement into the unit vector u and therefore i can write this d phi as del of phi or gradient of that scalar into 
dl into u and therefore if i calculate this d phi by dl or rate of change of phi with respect to l along the direction of unit vector u then it can be calculated by this dot product gradient of scalar field and the unit vector along this direction this is called as directional derivative of the scalar field to summarize if we want to find out rate of change of a scalar field phi per unit length along a particular direction which is given by some unit vector then that can be obtained by taking dot product of gradient of the scalar field with the unit vector and with this now we can understand the physical significance of gradient of scalar suppose this is the scalar field phi as it was in the previous slide this is the point x0 y0 z0 where we are finding the gradient of the scalar field this is the gradient of scalar at the given point and this is an arbitrary unit vector and if we find d phi by dl rate of change of scalar field per unit length at the given point then it can be calculated by taking dot product of gradient of that scalar at the given point with the unit vector along which we want to find out this rate of change d phi by dl therefore is magnitude of gradient into magnitude of the unit vector which is equal to 1 into cos theta where theta is angle between these two vectors del phi and the unit vector along which we are finding the change now when will this d phi by dl be maximum it will be maximum when this cos theta is equal to 1 which is the maximum possible value for cos theta when theta is real number of course d phi by dl maximum is therefore magnitude of gradient of scalar so what this equation gives us is this if we consider different directions at this point x0 y0 and z0 if we move along the different directions the field will change in general by different rate and the magnitude of that maximum rate is given by magnitude of gradient of the scalar at that point and what is the direction in which this maximum rate of change occurs it occurs when this direction of unit vector u and the direction of this gradient of scalar field they are same that means the rate of change is maximum when we move along the direction of gradient of that scalar field and therefore this red arrow here gives us the maximum rate of change of phi with space therefore we can conclude that gradient of a scalar field is a vector with its magnitude equal to maximum rate of change per unit length of the scalar field and when we move along this direction along the direction of this vector which is gradient of the scalar field then we have the maximum rate of change of the scalar field with respect to space now with this understanding of meaning of gradient of scalar we can come at another conclusion suppose this is the scalar field phi and this curve here is equipotential curve so that phi which in general is function of space is equal to constant for this whole curve this is called as the equipotential surface since i'm drawing this in two dimension we get a curve if we consider space a three dimensional space then we will have instead of this curve we will have the surface and therefore it is called as equipotential surface in general equipotential surface for us is surface for which this scalar assumes the same value and the condition that we have imposed on the fields that it should be well behaved make sure that there exists such equipotential surfaces 
now suppose we are moving from this point in different directions so let me first consider this arrow which is tangent to the equipotential surface if we move along this direction of the tangent basically we are moving on the same surface and the change that occurs in phi when we move along this direction is zero so there is no change in scalar at all if we consider this direction now this is a vector which can be resolved into two components one which is perpendicular to the equipotential surface and the other which is along the equipotential surface when we move in this direction then the component which is along the tangent of the equipotential surface does not contribute to any change in scalar field however the component which is perpendicular to it causes the field to change and therefore in we can say that when we move perpendicular to the equipotential surface then we have the maximum change in phi and we just now saw that this d phi by d l maximum occurs along the direction of gradient of the scalar field and its magnitude is also same as the gradient at that given point and therefore we can say that at any given point x0 y0 and z0 this del phi is perpendicular to the equipotential surface at that point this is the conclusion gradient of a scalar field is always normal to the equipotential surface at the given point so this is one more conclusion that we want to draw from this lecture let's quickly summarize what we have discussed gradient of scalar field is a vector with maximum rate of change of scalar field with space its direction is along the maximum rate of change and its magnitude is also maximum rate per unit length then when we take dot product of gradient of scalar field along any unit vector that gives us by how much the scalar changes per unit length along that direction of the unit vector and finally we saw that gradient of scalar field at any point is always normal to the equipotential surface at that point here we have come at the end of this lecture in next couple of lectures we will discuss the physical significance of divergence of a vector thank you for watching